Hey, what's up guys, it's Jonathan, and today I wanna to talk to you about a program that I've been using on my iMac that has really helped me out in terms of video editing. The program is called Kino, and it's definitely a legitimate program, especially if you're into filmmaking or you're a professional or semi-professional filmmaker. Kino is an all-in-one solution for viewing your media, selecting it, labeling it, creating markers, then transcoding it to whatever type of file format you want, and then importing it directly into Final Cut Pro 10 or Adobe Premiere Pro. You can pick Kino up on their website. It retails for 159 bucks. You can get a trial if you wanna try it out before you buy it. And I'll leave that link in the description of this video, so make sure you check there. Unfortunately, at the time of this video, Kino is only available on Mac OS. So if you're a Windows user, you're kind of SOL, but they do have a Windows application coming soon and it should be released later this year. You can head over to the website and sign up to be a beta tester if you want to you know, test out Kino on your Windows PC. So I've been using Kino for a few months now and initially I didn't really think too much of it. I was like, well, it's kind of pointless if I can do everything within either Final Cut or Premiere Pro. However, I wanted to take a step back and look at it from an outsider's perspective as more of a professional filmmaker. And that's when I really realized the foundation kind of was built on as well as the incredible tools and how powerful this application is. Typically for me, I just use the transcoding properties built into Kino, the reframer, as well as the media viewer because there's certain file formats that I cannot view within um, the Finder application on Mac OS. So in order to explain things a little bit further, we're gonna head over to the iMac here and I'm going to demonstrate a few things that Kino can do. So let's go ahead and bounce over there now. Okay, so we're at the desktop. We're gonna go ahead and jump into like a desktop view. That way I can show you guys around Kino, what it has to offer, a few examples, that kind of stuff. The first thing we're gonna start with is some Galaxy S8 camera footage. Um, this was from a video I did called Dog Life, pretty much a cinematically shot Galaxy S8 camera sample video. I'm gonna show you how I transcoded those clips and a few other things that I did to make the footage look the way it did um, using Kino. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the desktop mode. So we're at our desktop here. We're gonna go ahead and launch Kino. And right off the bat, you're gonna see how beautiful of an interface Kino is and how easy it is to navigate. On the left-hand side, you're gonna have your devices. And this includes things like your SD card that you might have connected to your computer or any external storage. So locate the files that you wanna transcode. In this case, our files are located in a folder on the desktop, but in a more traditional setting, you'll be you know, using external media. So once you find your file that you wanna transcode, um, add any markers to, change the metadata, or just add like a crop mask, uh, select the file that you want, double click on it, and it's gonna pull up a separate screen. From here, you can add markers, you can uh, change the file format, which we're gonna do in just a minute. You can check out the metadata, the different content, which is more or less um, different frames. And you can double click on one of those frames and then export it as an image if you choose to do so. You can look at your sub clips and then the different tracks. And this includes the information that you shot in. So for instance, you can see I shot in 30p and it's a four by three aspect ratio, which we will be converting to a more traditional 16 by nine or 20 by 21 by nine aspect ratio. And you can see I shot in rec 709. So we'll go ahead and go back to here and you can see you have a convert button. But first let's go into settings and you can see you have um, you can export it to directly to Final Cut Pro 10, Final Cut Pro 7 as an XML. You can export the markers as stills. That's the Excel document that I mentioned briefly. And then you have your sub clips, so you can check out all that information. So for me, we're just going to go to convert, go down to editing, which means you're going to convert it to a more traditional editing format, making it easier to chop up and grade and whatever NLE you're using. Um, we're gonna use ProRes 422, so we'll go ahead and select that. The reason why this is popping up right now is because that file is actually deleted. So we'll go to Select, we'll go to Desktop, click Open, and from there, we're going to go down to where it says Video Re-Encode, and this is where you're gonna change your aspect ratio. So we'll click Settings, and you can see the frame rate we're not going to mess with. The size, we will change it to full HD and amorphic is what I use specifically for this particular video, but you can do cinema 4K, UHD TV 4K, 2K full HD, whatever it is you wanna do, you can do it right here. So for this example, we're gonna use full HD and amorphic. We're gonna select a custom aspect ratio and we'll do 21 by nine. 
and we're not gonna mess with anything else. Click OK. You can re-encode your audio if you want. We're not gonna do it for this particular example. Um, and you can also do trimming. So you can select your in and out points and it's only going to export that specific section. Once done, just click start and it's going to start transcoding that file. You can check on your job right here and you can see it's very fast. That's one thing I love about Kino is how fast it does transcode. So just wait a couple more seconds. Okay, it's finished. So we'll find the file on our desktop here, double click on it, and there you go. So pretty cool. And now you can bring that into Final Cut Pro 10 and you're not gonna get any stutters or anything like that because it's done in progress and it looks really good. Okay, so that was a quick example on how I use Kino when shooting the Galaxy S8 camera test video. Now I'm gonna show you a more practical stance. This is using the GH5 10-bit 422 footage, which a lot of people say that it's not really usable because of the high compression and the fact that NLEs don't really support that codec currently. But I found a workaround, I use Kino, basically transcode it and it works beautifully. Let's go ahead and jump back into the desktop now. This time, instead of using media that was already on the desktop, we're actually going to transcode the media straight from the SD card to the desktop as if we were getting ready to start editing. Now, first and foremost, let's load up Finder. And we're gonna go to the GH5 SD card and you're gonna see that you cannot view the media natively. So if you double click on it, it's going to tell you that the document could not be open because it's not compatible with the QuickTime player. But if we get out of Finder, go into Kino, select the GH5 memory card right here. We'll go to the same file. You're going to see the thumbnails pop up because you're able to view it natively within Kino. Now I'm not going to transcode all of these files, but we're gonna go ahead and pick one. So we will pick, um, this one right here looks good. So we'll pick it. You can see that if we go to tracks, it was shot in H.264, 422, 10-bit. It's 24P, shot in 4K, 16 by nine. It says the color space is Rec. 709, but in fact, I did shoot in Vlog on this. So not sure why that's popping up, but whatever. It's, you, you know it's Vlog. You can tell by how flat it is. So we will drop down to convert. We'll go to editing. And we're going to do ProRes 422HQ because it is a 422 10-bit file. Select that. We will leave it on the desktop directory right there. If you wanted to, you could change the output file name. We're not, we'll, we'll go ahead and change it. We'll do GH5 test. We don't need to re-encode the video or the aspect ratio or anything like that. So now we'll just click start. We'll go over to the job. You can see it is in fact transcoding very, very fast. Again, I love Kino because of that speed. Super cool. And it's almost done. Just about, boom, done. So now we have a ProRes 422 HQ file here that we can edit within Final Cut Pro 10, has all of that color data saved in it, and it looks beautiful. Really, really, really awesome. Just the fact that I can view the files natively uh, is just really cool. If you make your money off of doing filmmaking, it's definitely an invaluable tool, but in the end, only you know your workflow and what exactly you need. So it comes down to your personal preference and how you tend to work. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and drop me a big thumbs up. Remember, if you wanna check out this program, you can find that link in the description of this video. Make sure you follow me on all my social media platforms. Leave a comment if you have any questions or hit me up on Twitter that tends to be a little bit faster and I will talk to you in the next one. Be easy.